that accompanied Prospero into exile. Good, speak to the mariners! Good, speak to the mariners! Or do it yearly, or we run ourselves aground! So that out of this ink pot comes everything. Out of the magic of this ink, which is then put onto the paper, come the images and the words and the ideas. It is like the Pandora's box, like the thesaurus from which everything springs. Or we run ourselves aground! Down with the topmast! We do all know, perhaps from the nursery, as the pop-up book. It already has a three-dimensional three existence. Open the pages and up comes this three-dimensional entity. And what I wanted to do was to try and use those sorts of ideas to make magic books, to make books where the actual images inside the pages, through animation, did work, did maneuver, did change, did transmogrify. In this marriage of words and images, the High Priest is the voice. Having won the melodious tones of Sir John Gielgud, Greenaway decided to extend the powers of his magician Prospero to speaking every part. For Gielgud, who'd harbored a lifelong wariness of film, it was to be the ultimate challenge. Thy food shall be the fresh brook mussels, withered roots, and husks wherein the acorn cradled. Follow! I will resist such entertainment till mine enemy has more power. Oh, dear father, make not too rash a trial of him, for he's gentle and not fearful. What, I say? My foot, my tutor? He's had a very richly lived lifetime of admiration for Shakespeare, and it really shows in every line. He lavishes so much care and loving attention. It's a wonderful tribute to his art and skill. Now, what's amiss? Why, why hold back? The mutual admiration of Gielgud and Greenaway evolved during the making of this television film of Dante's Inferno. It persuaded Gielgud that Greenaway could be trusted to immortalize a Gielgud version of Prospero, and it aroused in Greenaway a passion for the computer animation techniques of television, a chance to manipulate science for the sake of art. The language, too, that's developing very rapidly, uh, very largely due to the technology of television, is very, very exciting. In some ways, it's much more akin to me towards things that a painter does, the way he can re-ratio a frame. He can recolor it, reshape it, reorganize it, flip it, twist it, turn it, do a thousand different sort of forms of metamorphosis on the picture. And that's, in some senses, what a contemporary painter does. So it's like a tool that goes back, in a peculiar way, to the palette and the canvas. The primary tool for these animations is the Quantel paint box. It's not new, but the ability to transfer images from the paint box to film without a loss of quality is. The medium is high-definition television, available in Japan. So to a film that had only cost one million pounds, a Tokyo television company donated two million pounds of technical facilities, intrigued by Greenaway's ambitions. The result has excited the graphic design industry. I, I work in the, uh, the area of the printed image in uh, high-resolution um, paint box. And uh, what they've done is they've taken this technology from, from the print industry and applied it to the uh, filmmaking process so that there's been a massive leap in, the, in the, the quality that can be achieved. It is full of investigative drawings and exploratory text written on many different thicknesses of paper. The images spill forth thick and fast, at times too fast to be appreciated in a single viewing. You have the hand which was filmed photo uh, photographically in an uh, Amsterdam studio was filmed on with a conventional camera. Um, the actual images which are produced on this book here are made through Quantel high definition. Uh, the images um, of the falling drip are also shot on a television camera. And the images which are now coming up in the background were shot with a film camera. So, I mean, this is perhaps not the best example in the film, but you can begin to see how all these images layer on layer, 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 on layer are being built up which after all in some ways is only the way in which the imagination works, it's only the way that works of art are made in a peculiar way. As the pages are turned there are rippling waves and slanting storms, rivers and cataracts flow and bubble, plans of hydraulic machinery and maps of weather forecasting flicker with arrows, symbols and agitated diagrams. Greenway's always had the art of setting his audience challenges at the same time as being very entertaining and the fact that people always get really wound up about Greenaway's films and often take extreme exception to them because he's playing all these games 
Um, I think it's good because he's always known how to be very provocative and sometimes it works in different ways but I think here it, it's uh, completely successful. We put sand on top of the page uh, literally because of the English idiom of to blow away the sands of time. Now that's really hidden deep inside the fabric and I would suggest that perhaps nobody would have appreciated that visual parallel without me, me making a comment about it. But that sort of language is going on all the time for those who want to know. And it doesn't matter if they don't know. I don't think so, no. I know it's there. Greenaway's training as a painter glows through the tableau he's created for the screen. The attention to historical detail through costume, colour, lighting and sound is immaculate, but it exposes him to the criticism that he's more interested in the visual impact than the drama. My one reservation with what he's done is that I don't think he's paid quite enough attention to the way the actors behave within the paintings. Um, barring a handful of leading actors, um, too often one sees actors who don't quite know what they're doing, or don't, they certainly don't look like they know what they're doing, and one gets the impression that perhaps Greenaway doesn't have very much time, and certainly not enough patience. Um, for his actors, which is a pity. Even now we heard a hollow burst of bellowing like... But for cinema buffs, Greenaway's latest work has opened up a brave new world. Upon my honor, sir, I heard a humming. I think he's forced mainstream cinema to take stock of ideas that it hasn't really had to take on board before. All the infections that the sun sucks up from bogs, fens, flats, on Prosper Fall, Peter Greenaway believes the technological breakthrough achieved in his film is as revolutionary as the invention of printing. Yet I needs must curse. And yet I needs must curse. For they in more pinch, fright me with urchin shows, pitch me in the mire, nor leave me like a firebrand in the dark out of my way, unless he bid them. Tremendous excitement about this project for me, mm. because it's about so many things. It's almost like a sort of Gutenberg revolution not because it's associated with me, but because the way of doing things like this can totally change our attitude towards cinema, television, painting, photography, bookmaking. It really is, I think, right on the edge of here, something very, very exciting indeed. For the two master magicians, Greenaway and Gielgud, their Tempest really is the stuff that dreams are made on. An independent verdict will be delivered by judges at next month's Venice Film Festival, for which Prospero's books is entered. This is a thick printed volume of plays dated 1623. There are 35 plays in the book and room for one more. 19 pages have been left for its inclusion, right at the front of the book, just after the preface. <laughs>